one of the struggles that 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 some of the kids are having is that you know they got they grew up and and today that people don't own anything it's my father's fault it's my mother's fault this one's fault that one's fault i'm like you can't you can't go on in life if you're busy with everybody else's fault how do you know this so it's a totally different subject but just just for anyone i guess someone has to hear this abuse anything that you've gone through in life parents whatever it is you you can't live in the past why by Avram Avinu, and I, and I had this discussion with someone in my house tonight, right before I walked into this, to, to this share. And he said, why should I forgive my parents? They treated me so bad for so long. Why should I forgive them? I said, first of all, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I, I spoke to him about, well, Shabena went through stuff, and Dabra, everybody, and Yosef, and Sadiq, and they, I'm not any of them, and I'm not the stipler, and I'm not that. So don't give me, don't compare me to anyone. I said, you're right, okay, I said. I never understood, and I speak about this by Pasha Lech Lech a lot. Avram Avinu had an unbelievable yeshiva, the Charan, right? The people that he made in Charan. Unbelievable yeshiva, packed. Bali Chuvas, Avram Avinu had packed. Bigger than Eshet Big, big place. Why does Hashem throw him out? Why does Hashem say, He was doing so well. Why did he send them out? And he told them, I'm not even telling you where you're going. Because the bottom line is, whoever's listening, to grow, to grow, and to have a life, you got to leave your past. So, Akash Baruch Hu understood that he had an unbelievable yeshiva. But, Nimrod, Terach, they threw him into a fire, the Avaid Zara, the place that he lived, Hashem said, you can't be Avram Avinu unless you leave your past. So you got to get out of Beis Avicha, Moladcha, Atzecha. And you know what? If you're willing to leave your past, you're guaranteed to succeed in your future. I'm not even going to tell you where to go. Because it's not about where you're going. It's about that you just let go. And you know what? If you're not so from and you're not so great, you're not such a tzaddik, let go because you're selfish. Because you cannot continue your life when you're carrying all those anger and hatred and memories. You can't go further. So Hashem was saying, I don't even need to tell you where to go. You know, drug addicts, when they come out of rehab, the first thing that we tell them, you must change your environment. No, but I'm good. I, I could say no. I can know how to say no now. I'm good. I did six months. I could say no. I'm like, you could say no, and you could say no. But if it's going to be the same friends in the same city and the same dealers and the same everything, you're going to say yes in the end. First thing is change your environment. The Kosh Baruch Hu said, Avram, you're doing great. You have a great yeshiva. But you can't become Avram Avinu, the Av Hamoin Goyim, unless you leave your past. Let it go. So if your parents weren't perfect, let it go. In the Holocaust, there's a difference between the survivor and the victim. A lot of, and I'm not judging them, chas v'shalom, tzaddik and whatever, but even the people who went off the derech and everything else, who could judge them? Who could judge them after a Holocaust? Right? But they never let it go. They're walking around with the Holocaust on their shoulders. Our parents, our grandparents, they don't even talk about it, most of them. They don't even want to talk about it. That's the past. I came to America I work hard, I daven hard, I learn hard. There were a few survivors that tell me they stand in Borough Park and they watch all these little yeshiva kids get onto the buses and they're like, we won, you machshamo, you lost. You don't even have a country anymore. We won. They let go of the concentration camp. They let go. They left that all behind. They came here and they, they look at these little kinderlach and, and the shuls and the yeshivas and they're like, Yemachshimo lost the Nazis, lost. What do you mean they lost? They killed six million. They still lost. Titus, titus, you lost. So if, you, if you're a young person listening, or you're an older person listening, and you're living in your past, Jews don't live in their past. Jews learn from their past. Don't live in the last five months either. Don't walk around with your head down in the last five months or whatever happened, whatever we went through, if you're going to live in the last five months, it's going to make you sicker. 
It's going to depress you and it's going to give you anxiety. And Nebuch, there's so many people out there that are taking medicine and therapy and Nebuch, they're not alive anymore because of depression and anxiety of, of this whole COVID, this whole thing. Let it go. Let's go further. We got Rosh Hashanah. We got Elul. I need Ladaidi, Ladaidi Li. What does it mean? I, I'm to my loved one and my loved one is to me. That's not fear. That's love. What kind of, what kind of, why do we name the month of Elul? It's the month of judgment. It's the month of preparing for the biggest court case of your life. Whether you're going to live and die, it should be a Anila Chuva Uchuva Li. Anila Yira of a Yira Li. What's this love? Anila Daidi Daidi Li? That sounds more like Adar. Not Elo. Wrong. Wrong. It's a relationship. It's love. Yira, everyone catches his fear. You know what Yira is? It's much more than fear. It's awe. Even if Hashem be Yira, even if be Simcha, how can I fear and love? No, it's awe. When the king walks in, you're like, wow. That's much more than, ah, don't hurt me. Please don't hit me. Don't burn me. Don't give me a disease. Please, Hashem. No. That's not what it is. That's not what he wants. He wants Anila Daidi even Daidi Lee. Or, yes, he's, a, he's God. Yes, or, he's like, wow. Look at everything he created.